All right, so we're sprinting from the blocks on this edition of the Sports Max Zone. As track and field finally came into focus at the ongoing Paris Olympics early on Friday, with five of ten Caribbean women advancing to the semi finals of the 100 meters. Fastest among those was two time champion Jamaica Shelly Ann Fraser Price, who crossed the line in 10.92 seconds to finish second in Heat 8. Behind the Ivorian Marie Jose Talou Smith, who took the race in a season's best 10.87. Fraser Price's time was the second fastest qualifying time from the round. Now, St. Lucia's Julian Alfred also progressed, winning Heat 2 in 10.95 seconds ahead of New Zealand's Zoe Hobbs in 11.08 in second, and Joso Zainab of Italy third in 11.30. Jamaica's Theo Clayton, who placed second in Heat 4, and another Jamaican, Shashali Forbes, along with Trinidad and Tobago's Leah Bertrand, who placed second and third from Heat 6, were the others to advance from the region. Well, Anil Roberts, uh, you would have seen him, of course, on our Olympic coverage. He joins us this afternoon to unpack. So, Anil, that was quite a mouthful, had a lot to talk about where the sprints were concerned. So, your opening remarks from what you saw today? Well, my opening remarks, unfortunately, begin with an embarrassing interview done by the flag bearer for my beloved country of Trinidad and Tobago, Michelle Liai. After running a pedestrian 11.33, she then decided to attack the entire country and talk about haters who do not support athletes. I'll give a little advice to an athlete. When you disappoint and you're sad, Zip your lip and do not embarrass yourself. You're in sport and if you're a track and field athlete, you're in entertainment. People are allowed to criticize, give opinion. That's why you get the big money, the big bucks. So even if they are haters, Michelle Liahi, what you do is you shut them up by your performances. You don't run slow and then come and say, well, people said you were going to run slow and you ran slow. Furthermore, Trinidadians and Tobagonians, they support and love their athletes no matter what. So even if we don't like an outfit that you wore, that does not mean they're hating. I saw the outfit, I have no opinion because as far as I'm concerned, an opening ceremony is irrelevant to the performance and elite level athletes going for Olympic medals. As a flag bearer of my country, Michel Aie, you embarrassed yourself, you embarrassed your country, and you think I think you should apologize attacking the citizens like that. Furthermore, the mere fact that you are allowed to carry the flag after missing three tests for your out of competition dope testing in your career when george borvel for example i coached for 16 years he's yet to miss one test i think you need to stay calm humble yourself and realize that performances on the track be yeah. old talk anytime yeah and speaking about performances on the track you know mm -hmm. now that you got that off your chest <laughs> Anil, uh shelly and fraser price Theo clayton julian alfred they really put on a performance. They absolutely did. It was nice to see Shelly Ann Fraser Price come out of the blocks, go through a dry phase, stand up, reach peak speed by 35 meters, and shut down at 55 meters. Um, Talu Smith, who's married to Trin Begonian, she looked like she wanted to prove a point, send a message, maybe build some of her own confidence because she ran a little bit extra too hard for a, a first round. Shelly Ann Fraser Price looks good. Can she continue to relax and take that into the semifinals and the finals? I'm glad she has no pressure. This is her fifth and final Olympics. She has a bag of medals. Uh, Tia Clayton, poor start, but poor start with good speed. I like that. The best time to start poorly is the first round. Julian Alfred, uh, St. Lucia, y'all get ready. Nobody should be working, nobody. The public service should be shut down. Semi-finals tomorrow and finals. The whole of St. Lucia should find a TV, find some way, find Sportsmax and look because this woman is on form. She looks great and could do some great things for St. Lucia. So Kari Richardson seems to be the favorite. <laughs> Looking good, Layton. <laughs> well, Layton, I need your opinion too because apart from being the co-host, you're a track and field guru. So tell me, what did you see? I, I mean, I've come covered everything that that, that um, 
my guest here. I mean, I, but yeah, I'm going to have a talk about it right now. The reality is, I thought the, 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 the athletes from the Caribbean did really well this morning. Those who were expected to do well did well. No surprises, I right? Was, not, not really. I, I was particularly pleased with Shelly and Fraser Price because my own concerns about her knee injury, her knee situation has been going on for the past few years. But to see her do this, what she did this morning suggests that she has a lot more in the tank. I did not select her to be on my podium. But what are you thinking now? I'm thinking that she may prove me wrong and I'd be happy to be wrong. But I'm just concerned about, she has a very tough semi-final tomorrow. Um, she has Julian Alfred and she has Shakara Richardson. The winner of the final will come from that heat, I believe. That means she's going to have to run really fast. Can she do it back to back? We don't know. But if anybody can do it, it should be Shelly and Fraser Price. But I was also pleased with Julian Alfred. She stands on the cusp of history here. No other St. Lucian athlete has ever won an Olympic medal before. And I think Julian Alfred is about to become the first. Yeah, a quick word on uh, Shasha Lee Forbes. She stepped in. Um, she stepped in because of uh, Sharika Jackson um, pulling out of the 100. And then the youngster, Tia Clayton. We've been told for quite some time that Tia Clayton is going to surprise all of us. Were you surprised? Um, I, I was surprised at how poorly she ran the first heat, but I think that was, a, but was nerves. You know, she's never performed before a crowd this size before. She's 19 years old. She's going to turn 20 in just over a week, uh, just over two weeks from now, or just under two weeks from now. And I think having got that first run, the nerves would have probably been eased a little bit. So I think we'll see a better performance from her in the, in the semifinals. And who was the other person you mentioned? I said Tia and Shasha Lee. And Sasha Lee, well, look, Sasha Lee came into these Olympics thinking that she was going to run the relays. She heard 48 hours ago that she's going to be running the flat 100. I think she did very well given the circumstances because when you're thinking relay and then all of a sudden you have to switch your focus to an individual event, the, the mindset is completely different for both. So I think for her to readjust as quickly as she has and get her first running, because also you know, it's about what she's been doing in training. Yes. Right? The repetitions and the starts from 0 to 60, 0 to 30, to get the start, to get the transitions right. She hasn't been doing any of that for the past couple of weeks. So to come in here and then run 11.19, I'm quite pleased and I hope she runs faster tomorrow. I don't know if she'll advance, but I think she'll give it her best shot. And I don't, don't think anybody could complain what she delivers tomorrow. Yeah, and Anil, you know, Leighton just said something so important. He spoke about Shelly and Fraser Price, where he didn't really have her to medal. But based on what he saw this morning, you know, he's probably thinking again, thinking twice. Who do you have to medal? Well, that's a great question. Uh, right now, I would say... Shakari Richardson appears under no pressure. Remember, it changes as the pressure goes up, as the lights get brighter. Shakari Richardson throughout looks great, but in the last four races, three bad starts. If a bad start comes at the wrong time, then others could come through. Julian Alfred, Shelly and Fraser Price look incredible. The, the British girl, Nita, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but she has a history of looking good early and then succumbing to the pressure. Uh, I hope that our our young girl, Leah Bertram, could get up there yes. at least to get sub-10. Will that get her into the... Sub-11. Sub-11, sorry. <laughs> sub-11. I want, I've gone to the men already. <laughs> sub-11. Will that get her into the, the semi, into the finals? I don't think so, but it'll be nice to use this occasion just to break that barrier. The Caribbean looks set. I think the Americans are all from one camp. The coach seems to have prepared his athletes. But Tia Clayton, if she comes out of the blocks like Clayton said, I've seen, I saw in the last 30 meters what I need to see. That young lady has some blistering speed. If she relaxes, if she understands that the moment is there, it's just another race, just like if she's on a high school track and she gets out even, Look for her to be in the final. Leighton, and I heard your opinion on the men's 100 meters. You know, we spent some time talking about that. But I know Leighton, who seems to be a fan of Anil's jokes, would love to hear his take on the 100 meters because I didn't even know what you think about Noah Lyles versus Kishane Thompson. We didn't even get to discuss that. Well, I like it because Noah Lyles loves himself. And a mother always said, love yourself more than you love others. And Noel Lyles lives that. I don't know if tomorrow he's going to come out with Yu-Gi-Oh cards or if he's going to come out with a pack of cards to play all fours. But looking at Kishane Thompson, Leighton as a sports lover, as somebody who watches everything I watch, 
chess playing or darts. And I even saw a knife throwing the other day. A train Bagonian was in it in the bush somewhere in Canada, throwing knives on a wooden target. But Keshane Thompson, when you see this gentleman run, there is something artistic. There's something beautiful, some power that uh, you don't normally see. And if he could put that sort of artistry with complex, scientific, tough, uh, technical running, we could see something great. So Keshane Thompson versus Noah Lyles. I always like a fella coming from 200 because it means you can handle the rounds, you can recover, and you will be there at the finish. The other men, obviously, to watch, I, I see Ricardo talking about the Italian. Uh, Ricardo wanted to bet his house. I don't want to make Ricardo homeless. I don't <laughs> see Jacobs coming into that final. I hope I'm wrong for Italy's sake. They, may, they didn't get into the tennis final because I think it's Djokovic versus Alcaraz, so Musetti lost. But I don't see Jacobs being a factor. I think the Jamaicans versus USA, maybe Africa could come in. No, I think, yes, I agree there, but I think the problem with Omaniala for me for Africa and Simbini, Simbini, I don't see Simbini running 9-7. Omaniala has Tobago potentially, but yeah. I think his early speed is not good enough. His speed maintenance is great, but his early speed is not good enough. I not, will not know him because he's still very young. But I think Omaniala runs only fast in Kenya, 5,000, 6,000 meters above sea level, uh, 6,000 feet above sea level. He liked in here. Yeah, so what I think, I think the, the, the focus on Nolas and Kishane Thompson could create an opportunity for Oblique Seville to come through. Yeah, nobody's been talking about and him. And the pressure I'm... is off him. Correct. You know, so I. Actually, I picked the Jamaican one-two for the main hundred final, and I think the reality is that it's very possible because I think Kishan Thompson is going to do things that nobody else in the field is able to do, which is go under nine-seven. And I think if anybody comes close to nine-seven, like Oblique Seville or no allies, possibly those are the three guys who are going to be on the podium. Yeah. The only guarantee is that Fred Curley, when he touched the track tomorrow, when he tra touched the track next week, when he touched the track for the end of his career, he will never break Usain Bolt record. So, Curly, forget our old talk. Stop that. Try to get into the final and try to get a medal. But Noah Lyles, while I hear, I hear Leighton, you know, I hear in some of the passionate Jamaican coming out. But Noah Lyles, if he gets out of the block, you're yeah. going to have to run 100 meters to beat him. Mm -hmm. The okay. race will not be over until that tape, because that man will start to move at 90 meters regardless. Yeah, really oozing with confidence. And the and caveat to that, though, is that if, if Kishin Thompson gets going, you can't catch nobody's going to be close. <laughs> well, it, we don't have to wait too long, gentlemen, so I can't wait to see what happens this weekend. But we're going to move along now. And after becoming only the second Caymanian to make an Olympic final, 22-year-old Jordan Crooks could only manage ace in the final of the men's 50-meter freestyle earlier on Friday, stopping the clock at 21.64 seconds. As Australia's Cameron McEvoy claimed goal ahead of Great Britain's Benjamin Proud and Francis Florent Manadou, who took the remaining podium places. So, Anil, this is your expertise. We know you follow every single sport. You just t t told us about even knife throwing. But this is your, you know, expertise. So talk to me about what you saw in the pool today, especially with emphasis on our Caribbean athletes. Well, Jordan Crooks, main man, Caribbean man, made the final respect to him. To go through the rounds, first round 21-51, second semi-final 21-54, and then unfortunately in the final 21-66, a little bit slower for eighth place. But you must give respect where respect is due. He made the final, he got up there and he swam. Unfortunately, uh, you know, sometimes he's still young. But you want to have a good first experience in a final when the lights are bright. Because then you talk about a situation where you may have one bad performance. Uh, because had he swum the, any one of the two times that he had done previously, he would have been bronze. So it's as a coach, while I'm giving him a, sh a shake hand, I'm a little bit worried that we gave up an opportunity to be on the podium. Becoming... Uh, what we call, and let me do, let me be careful. If you have 
one bad performance and then unfortunately in the next world championships or big time you do not swim well you then step into the zone of becoming what may be called a choke artist and so on so uh, we have seen many great athletes who perform well when the lights are dim but when you turn on the bright lights they disappear so they break world records in small meets in italy and then when it's time on the olympic stage they come fourth and fifth so jordan crooks has to be careful he's already done well at world championships but olympics is where it's at he's gotten a taste now he must refocus, redouble his efforts and get out there. His starts are immaculate. His underwater butterfly kicks to 14 and a half meters, best in the world. To 25 meters, he is right there with McAvoy's second place. But the problem started to arise at about 30 meters. Yeah. His stroke rate, which is the rate at which his arms turn over, started to slow down. Yeah. Though his distance per stroke maintained, but I think he has to be able to maintain that stroke rate at least the 45 meters to get in there to get Why a medal. Why do you think that happened now? Good question. I would love to know. Janelle Atkinson told me something today on set that maybe he should have taken a breath. Most of these swimmers do not breathe. From the time you say take your marks, yeah. beep. They take a breath and they do not breathe. George Bovell was a little different. When they say take your marks, he used to pack his lungs, he has huge lungs, and go down holding his breath. No, that came, that was to his disadvantage in 2012 because he was on the blocks holding his breath and the crowd made noise. And then the, 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 the announcer went, shh, he's still holding his breath. Yeah. And they announced the race, 50 meter final 2012, and he was still holding his breath. So he was out 30 meters in front. And then Manadou, the guy who came bronze here now in Paris in lane eight, he took the gold medal in 2120. George slowed down to 2169. Should have been 2151 to get silver. So Crooks, I believe he should have possibly, because he's a huge man, a lot of muscles. When you have that muscles, your body is using up that oxygen. Maybe he should have taken a quick breath at about 35 meters to continue finishing. Because one something that works for one doesn't necessarily work for, work for all. Yeah. Well, Anil, I know you can sit on this set and discuss so many different topics, but, you know, we've come to the end of this segment. Thank you so much, as always, it's for a pleasure. stopping by. And we'll hear from you again on the Olympic show, We Paris. Thank you very much. Have a great show. <laughs> Blessings. Of course, Anil Robert, Roberts there stepping in on the zone and, you know, giving us a bit of his expertise when it comes to the Olympics. We're going to take a quick commercial break and come right back.